Yo, what's up guys? Hope all is well. Joey here for Crater, and today we're gonna to be building a PC with a $600 budget. This will be the best bang for your buck at that price point. So we're gonna break this video down into three parts. First, we're gonna go over all the parts and their prices, talk a little bit about them, why we picked them. Second, we're gonna be moving on to the tutorial. I'm gonna do my best to be as detailed as possible from the beginning to the very end to give you guys full confidence in building your very first system. And then at the very end, we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna put our system to the test against a lot of current popular titles. So be sure to stay tuned till the end so you can see how our system we're gonna build here today performs. All right, let's jump into it. We're gonna kick it off with our graphics card. This is the RX 6600 by AMD. It's got eight gigs of VRAM. We picked this guy up for 230, and this card is what's gonna be responsible for giving us really good performance in a lot of games. For 230 bucks, you're gonna get performance very similar to an RTX 3060, which is a card that goes for 370 currently. This card's gonna be able to run new games like the new Call of Duty Warzone 2.0, our respectable friends. It's one of the titles we're gonna play later. So this card gives us three display ports and one HDMI port. The CPU we're pairing it with is a Ryzen 5 5500. This is a six core CPU, and we paid 95 bucks for it it comes included with a stock amd heatsink which we will be using here we have our 5500 we're getting a six core cpu with a max boost of 4.2 gigahertz for 95 bucks pretty good and that processor is going to pair very nicely with our motherboard choice this is the micro atx form factor rocking a b550 chipset and it does have built-in wi-fi here are the ports it's rocking, and it does give us two M.2 SSD slots. We're also gonna wanna get out our IO shield and our Wi-Fi antennas if you guys are gonna be using Wi-Fi. And this board ran us $100. Moving on to our RAM, 16 gigs Corsair Vengeance LPX kit at 3200 megahertz. The same kit we recently used in our $500 build guide. At the time of filming, these are currently going for 50 bucks. Our storage selection, 500 gigs M.2 SSD by WD Blue. This is going for 40 bucks, so M.2 SSDs have gone down a bit in price. You would typically see an M.2 like this going for 50. So that small drop is nice. And here's our speedy little drive. Next, what's gonna be powering everything is a 650 watt power supply, bronze rated by Cooler Master the power cable and here we have our power supply and the cables we're gonna need all right guys one more essential part to cover our case this is Zalman's s2 went for 60 bucks so this is an atx form factor case it has a really simple clean black design it's just very sleek and minimalistic inside we have our case accessories which we are going to need set this right here and this case comes included with three 120 millimeter fans keep in mind this case was 60 bucks right so for 60 bucks you're getting a clean looking case with a thick tempered glass side panel and three included fans it's good value for your money one fan located back here and two fans in the front now that covers all our essential parts that ran us 625 bucks now before we get into the build guide we're gonna go over our optional parts this is gonna be for our build aesthetics first we're gonna be using custom sleeve power supply cables in the black and gray colorway so instead of having these stock cables in the front these beautiful custom sleeve cables are gonna be in display instead. I also love how where it plugs in, it's transparent. It's like that for a reason, because these are our cables, guys. You can pick these up at craterhq.com, link in the video description. Second thing is what's gonna add a splash of life inside our case, the RGB lighting, of course. This is a full complete kit that comes with two strips. You can also pick this up at craterhq.com. We're gonna plug these into our motherboard and then we're gonna be able to fully customize them to our liking, any lighting effect, any color. They're really bright. And then the last part is the Funko Pop black spider-man this is a spider-man no way home funko spider-man black and gold suit look at that that's clean and this is gonna look really good inside our system it's gonna really pull it together okay guys let's jump into the guide first we're gonna be installing our ryzen 5 processor into our motherboard the cpu installation is very simple taking a closer look at our processor there's a little golden arrow on the bottom left hand side and on our cpu socket on our motherboard there's also an arrow on the top left we're gonna pull this lever to the side and all the way up, and we're going to line up the golden arrow of our processor with the arrow on the motherboard. And we're gonna hover it over and then drop it into place. It did not go in yet. So when this happens, you don't want to push the processor down and try to get it in there because you will bend these pins underneath our processor and you do not wanna do that because you're then gonna have to straighten them out. So we're gonna line up both arrows again, hover it over and drop it. It'll fall right in just like that. Now we bring the lever all the way back down. Next, we're gonna remove both of these. And remember guys, every single part we're using for this build will be linked in the video's description for your convenience. 
So here we have our CPU heatsink. So it has four points, the other two right there, and it has pre-applied thermal paste, so no need to worry about applying that. We're gonna line up the four points, the four points on the motherboard. AMD text will be on the left-hand side. And we're gonna secure it. We're gonna get this side attached a bit, then I'm gonna do the screw across. Get that one attached a bit, onto the next ones. Attached, and the one across attach i attach all four of them like that a little bit first because if you attach one too much then it's going to be harder to attach the rest so there that was easy and now we just fully tighten all of them and you can't over tighten it it will not let you just keep going till your screwdriver stops final step we're going to connect the fan to the motherboard which is right here labeled cpu fan good Next, the installation of our RAM. Very simple process. We're gonna pull back the levers, the second row, and the fourth row. Our RAM sticks will only go in one way. So we want the vengeance text on the left. If you're using a different kit, just make sure that the indent lines up where it's not indented on the RAM slot. Okay, so we're gonna line it up, and then we're gonna push down with both thumbs equal force. It's gonna go all the way in, and the levers will clip back up. Same thing for our second stick. RAM is installed levers are back up all right guys next the installation of our m.2 ssd that is located right here we're going to be using a smaller screwdriver number zero and we're going to unscrew this right here and we're going to insert our m.2 into here now lay it down on the standoff and secure it storage installed and remember we have a second slot for additional storage upgrades we're doing good guys now we're ready to put our motherboard inside our case just going to wire these cables to the back of the case and the cable from our back fan to the back. So the motherboard is gonna go in our case. It's gonna lay right here. Now right here where I'm pointing is where we're gonna hook up a cable from our power supply to power our CPU. There is not enough clearance for that cable to go through here and plug into our motherboard. Therefore, before we install our motherboard, we're first gonna install our power supply to then connect the CPU power cable to our motherboard and then proceed to attach our motherboard. We're gonna be connecting some cables to it. It already has two attached, the big 24 pin cable, which powers our motherboard, and a CPU power cable. So additional cables we have to plug into it, a PCI Express power cable for our graphics card. So one end of it has two plugs, the other side only has a single plug. This is the side we connect to the power supply. So here we have our power supply and it's labeled for us. We're gonna plug it in right here under PCI Express. Nice. And the very last cable, it's gonna have an end like this, our Molex power cable. We're gonna plug in the end that looks like this to the power supply. That's gonna plug in right here, SATA. Those are all the cables we plug to the power supply, just two. So guys, remember, instead of these stock cables that really don't look appealing at all, we're going to instead hook up our Crater custom sleeve power supply cables. So the way this works is, originally, this would have plugged right into our motherboard. Instead, it's gonna plug into our 24 pin custom sleeved extension. Now this sick cable is gonna be on display in the front. So this is a complete kit. So we also have custom cables for the CPU and our graphics card. First, our CPU cable. It's an eight pin cable that's split for plus four so here we have two cables from our kit and if you take a look at them they're both eight pin cables but one is split six plus two this is the one for our graphics card this one over here split four plus four the cpu one so we're gonna hook up the end that is not split the other end of it that's all together to our original cpu cable we're gonna clip into it this one's done so now for our graphics card it only requires one eight pin for all the juice so here we have the basic stock cable notice how it's also split six plus two so let's get that together and plug it into not the split side the other side that's all together you can forget about this disgusting side because you just upped your cable game by picking up these cables from CraterHQ.com. The kit comes included with a lot of transparent cable combs. When we put in our power supply, always make sure the fan is facing down. And we're going to slide it into here. The screws to secure it came with it. Cool, guys. Now we're going to get our case ready to install our motherboard. So we're going to get our I.O. shield. We're going to take a look at the back of our case. We're going to clip in our I.O. shield from inside the case. In this position with the three holes on the bottom. We're going to clip it in. Cool. Now, before inserting any motherboard inside a case, you want to make sure that all the motherboard standoffs inside the case are in the appropriate position to support all the points on our motherboard. We're going to be adding four. We're going to find them in the bag included with the case. We're going to be adding one here here, here, and here. And they look like this, guys. I'm gonna secure it with a motherboard standoff screwdriver. I'll link this in the video description. 
There's one. All right, so we secured three. I need one more for here. There's no more in the bag, so I'm gonna go ahead and steal one from down here that we're not gonna use. All the standoffs we're using are circled. The ones that we installed are circled white. This one, this one, this one, and that one. The other four were already installed, and they're circled red. Now we're going to face our case down. Now guys, remember our CPU power cable? We're gonna wire that from the back of the case. And these clips of it, we're gonna clip up here. It should look like that, guys. So now we wanna line up the ports of our motherboard with our IO shield. I'm gonna pull the CPU power cable back a bit, line up the ports with the IO shield, and then let the board rest on the standoff. And line it up. There it is. And we're gonna secure our board with this screw that came with the case. We're gonna use this screw that came with the case to secure the board. Great job, guys. Motherboard's secure. Now I'm gonna wire the fan cable to the back again. Now I'm just wiring the cable of this fan to the back again. Cool, our motherboard's secure. All right, guys, we're almost done. Now we're ready to start plugging in our cables. We're gonna break it down into three groups of cables. Really simple, guys. First group of cables is our power supply cables. Second group is our case cables. And the third group is our fan cables. This one right here for the back fan, and this one over here for the two front ones powered by Molex. All right, guys, it's gonna be really easy. One cable at a time is how we're gonna take it. Let's start off with our power cables. So our CPU one's already taken care of. Next, we're gonna be installing our big 24 pin power cable. So this clip is gonna clip back here. So we're gonna light it up straight and push in all the way. And it has clipped. Now I'm gonna comb the cable a bit. That looks super clean. Next power cable, let's go to the back of the case. We're gonna get our SATA power cable and plug in one of the Molex ends to our two Molex fans in the front of our case. And we plug it in. Make sure it goes in all the way. Done. Now the last power cable is for our graphics card, but we're gonna save that for when we install our card. All right, that was fast. On to our second group, our case cables. First cable, guys, labeled HD audio. It only goes in one way with the HD audio text facing down. I'm gonna plug in right here, labeled F audio. Very good. Next cable is labeled USB. Also only plugs in one way. I'm plug in right here with the USB text facing up. Cool. Next case cable, our USB 3 cable. Let's plug in right here and the side with this hump goes up. Light it up straight and push it. Done. Final case cable is our JFP1 cables. I'm gonna throw a chart up on the screen to help us out. First cable, HDD LED. Positive and negative are labeled. Turn it around. The arrow right there is the positive side, so positive on the left. We'll plug it into the second row. First and second pins should look like that. Next, power LED. Positive again on the left, and they are labeled. Plugs into the first row first and second pins. So right on top of what we previously plugged in, good. Next, our reset switch, positive and negative, doesn't matter. Plugs into bottom row, third and fourth pin. Looks like that. And our last cable, positive and negative, also doesn't matter, power switch. Plugs into first row, third and fourth pins. Right on top of reset switch, JFP1 is now done. Good job, guys. And now our final group of cables, just one fan. Because remember, we already finished hooking up the two front ones. We're going to be using a fan extension cable. I will link it in the video's description. We're gonna plug one end of it into our system fan two header right there and wire the other end to the back of the case. Now in the back, we're gonna find our fan and we're gonna hook it up to the extension. And that's it guys. Now we're ready to install our graphics card, our RX 6600. It's going to plug into our first PCI slot, make room for it by removing the second and third brackets. So to remove them is we're going to push in the second one. And as we're pushing it in, I'm going to use another finger to bend this part up because I don't want this to scratch our motherboard. Once we do that, we simply go up, down, up, down, up, down and it'll fall right off. Same thing for the second one. Push in, bending this side all the way up, up, down, up, down, and it'll fall right off. Now, I'm gonna remove this. Perfect. Now we're gonna take our graphics card and we're going to push this lever back, line up the card. Once we have it lined up, we'll push in. And you'll hear the click and the lever we had pushed back will clip back up. Now let's screw the card in and now secure our card. Get the card up. Need another screw here that comes included with the case. And our graphics card is secure. Let's power it up with our Crater Custom Sleeve 
power supply cable. Definitely not leaving it like that. That's where the cable combs come in before, after. That looks so good. And that's it guys, we finished plugging in all the essential stuff. Now I'm going to be adding the two RGB LED strips. I'm going to be putting one of the strips up here on the top of the case and the second strip will go on the side like this. Now our Crater RGB LED kit comes with very strong magnetic attachments, a lot of them to fulfill all our needs. An extension cable, which we won't be using, but it's included in case you do need it in your build. And the cable that will connect the strips to our motherboard. So I'm gonna connect the first strip and our second strip. So I'm attaching our magnetic attachments and let's install the tops. Very nice. Look at that strong magnet. Boom. Our side one. Wow, look at that. That's like a perfect fit right there. Now we're gonna connect that end to the motherboard. We're gonna line up the side with the arrow with the top 12 volt pin. It's labeled on the board. And we're gonna plug it into here. Our four pin RGB header. Done. All right guys, now time to tidy up. Cue the time lapse. Look at that, he's holding onto the edge. Some things are just meant to be. First boot up, guys. Take a look at that, guys. What we built here today for the $600 price tag is beautiful. Who said budget builds can't look this good? Guys, I can't wait to start playing all the games on this beast. Before we do that, though, we need to install Windows 11, our operating system. I've done a video on how to install Windows 11 from a USB flash drive for free. That video is linked in this video's description. Then we're gonna frag it up in a bunch of different titles that are currently popping to see how this system performs. All right, guys, let's do it. The settings for Apex Legends, 1080p, FOB to the max 110. The rest of the settings, here they are. Let's get it. Thank you. Thank you the smoke. Hit him. Good job, good job. <laughs> that guy's so lit, bro. He's 70, hit for 70. Yeah, we are the champions. All right, guys, so settings for Fortnite. We're playing on 1080p. V-Sync is off. Rendering mode is performance. And here are the rest of the settings. Ain't no way this is happening. Let's go. GG, bro. The next game. Settings we're using for Valorant 1080p. Here's the graphics quality. Here we go. There's a feeling. That was clean. That was a quick soul for sure. Oh, sorry, dude. Oh, shoot. <laughs> what was he trying to do?
steal it from me. Come on, let me make my comeback. My comeback. Oh my god. Oh my god. No. Did I win? No, I lost. Anyways, the performance of Valorant's amazing. Temperatures of our components are amazing. Yeah, very smooth gameplay. All right, guys, next game. All right, guys, Rainbow Six Siege. What settings are we rocking? 1080p, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, FOV to the max, 90 graphics. Here they are. Let's jump in. All right, all right. Everyone follow Mel. Go, IQ. Go, 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 IQ. Go. Shoot, Tachan got me. They're all there. Oh my god. It's Great job, guys. Go, 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 go. one. Complete the mission. Time to play some Overwatch 2. Settings 1080p, max FOV 103. Graphics quality. Let's jump into it. Oh, shoot! Still alive. Oh, dude, he's a shot, bro. There What? It's just me. Oh, snap! Oh, we won! Yay! Nice. All right, Overwatch performance is amazing. Next one. All right, guys, settings for us: 90 FOV to the max. Graphics quality here it is. Mesh quality here. Image effects. 1080p of course let's get it so guys now we're testing out rust dude can you not shoot look man i just want to make this quick and painless yes we got help we got help yes you'll get it eventually man all right follow me man i knew it was gonna do that <laughs> you can't trust anyone in this world <laughs> no <laughs> Why are two people shooting me? Why are you bullying me? Huh? Ah! What? Alright guys, Rust was a very enjoyable experience. The game ran good on our RX 6600 system. Alright guys, GTA 5. Now the settings we are using. 1080p, DX11. This is off. I'm set to the medium. Here's the rest of the settings. Let's do it. All right, team. Hold the line. Got it. Oh, you stupid palm tree. Please tell me that went over. Why is it right under me? Where am I getting shot from? Pull, pull forward, pull forward. Bro, don't let him shoot me! He's still alive! <laughs> I'm up there. What the f Ah! <laughs> Alright guys, so first we're gonna play Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer. And then we're gonna play Warzone 2.0. Here are the settings. And here is our view. 120, max FOB. Ooh, that was a close one, bro. Hello? Whoa! 
You wave! How did he know I was there? Huh? Huh? Dude, wait. Ooh, don't you. Now's the time to heal up. So multiplayer runs good. Now we're gonna test that Warzone 2.0. Alright, we're off to a good start, guys. Warzone 2.0 performance is sick! Over 100 FPS, let's go! Dude, I heard so many footsteps in here. Oh, I saw him. Oh, shoot! What? Who's, who is my opponent? Man, we got this, alright? We got this. Alright, we're back in it. If we get him, shoot. Oh, he splattered me. Nah. Anyways, that was a fun match. We did good, guys. Warzone 2.0 performance was very solid. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up right there. I'll catch you guys in the next one the RTX 4080 build. Peace.